Hi everybody, Matt back with you. Hope you're okay. It's February half term and it's an absolutely stunning Monday afternoon. I'm heading up from Hardcastle Crags to Peckett Well. I'm going to visit a location I've been to a couple of times and done videos on and then to another location that I've filmed before. But this one is going to combine those places together It'll make sense when I get there, I promise. In case it gets a bit windy once we're out of the trees, um, I might as well tell you where we're going from here. Uh, we're going to go and have a look at, first of all, uh, the Peckett Pike War Memorial again. Uh, but we're going to look at some of the names that are on the War Memorial. And then head to Waynesgate Chapel Graveyard. Uh, and from there, find some of the graves and found some pictures to go along with the names so it's putting names to graves etc and a bit of information about them um yeah we won't be able to cover everybody on this one but we'll look at a, a select few for today Smeakin Hill War Memorial, which is where we are, or even Peckett Pike, had many different names. This particular year, in September, this monument has been here for a hundred years. We've got a personal connection to it as well. Uh, I think my great-great-uncle was the designer, Dent Parker. It was built for something like £600 and was one of many many hundreds of war memorials that were built across the country around the 1920s what we're going to do today though is not really concentrate on the monument itself but some of the names that are on the plaques here so on this 41 foot high monolith which stands above the crimsworth valley down into Hebden Bridge. There are 40 names here. Now, the stones to the left and the right are names of those from Wadsworth who died in the First World War. And the tablet at the bottom are six names that died in the Second World War. So not just as many, obviously, but it is specific that the names on here are of people who were from this area. And some of the names we have photographs and hopefully graves for are Willie Ashworth, Henry Dewhurst, Astin Jarvis, um, Albert Harwood as well, Ethelbert Redman. All those from the First World War, I think we should be able to find John Crabtree from the Second World War. But just to point out, there's no specific reason for those names specifically. I'm not ranking them any differently uh, to anybody else on here. Um, and they're all far braver the men than me. Um, it's purely because we can find uh, a photograph and hopefully the grave and there may well be others in the area that aren't in Wayne's Gate. Uh, and of course, unfortunately, a lot of these are commemorated in the places they fell. They're not specifically buried in Wayne's Gate.
Right, let's head to Wayne's Gate. This is the war memorial that's now really used in Pecketwell uh, as opposed to the one on the hillside purely because it's easier to get to. You might just be able to make out Pecket Pike on the hill in the distance so you might be able to understand why a lot of people might not be able to access it. You might not be able to make it out with the sun being where it is but in the distance long way away is Studley Pike, which is obviously what Peckett Pike is based on. And in the sun is Hebden Stall. So we've arrived at Wayne's Gate Chapel and its graveyard. Some of my family are buried here and I know some of you who watch these will also have relatives buried here. Uh, so obviously um, it's just covering the stories from the past. Uh, there is no intent to upset anybody with this video. Uh, but if your gravestone of any relative might accidentally appear, um, I apologise. Let's see if we can find any of the names from the War Memorial. What I'm not sure is if any of these are likely to be um, war graves. Actually, I think we've got our answer for the first one right here. Yep, yeah, so this is the uh, war grave of Vernon Clay. Behind it is the original gravestone, which sadly uh, is quite badly damaged. Vernon Clay was a member of the Lancashire Fusiliers uh, and was actually buried here at Wayne's Gate. Um, unfortunately he was leading a battalion and uh, got caught in shrapnel fire and uh, sadly it kind of badly damaged his head and blinded him uh, so he was brought back to London and uh, passed away from his wounds so uh, it's good that there's a, a, a war grave, especially for him, I think. Next up we have Astin Jarvis, who was a rifleman who died on the 10th of April 1917 at the age of just 25. Astin died from his wounds at the Battle of Arras. This is his grave that shows that information. Died of wounds received in the Battle of Arras, April 10th, 1917. The next grave belongs to Albert Barrett Harwood. And as it says there, was drowned on the HMS Arcadian, April the 5th, 1917, at 23 years of age. Albert was a junior wireless operator. And he was lost at sea. He was killed by a torpedo from a German U-boat. And the SS Arcadian was sunk. Albert lived in Old Town at Chisley Terrace. and was a regular attendee at Old Town Church and the Sunday School. And also worked at Acre Mill as a clerk. During his war service it took him across the world, including Gibraltar, Bombay and Barbados. Next we have the grave of Willie Ashworth, who died in France in 1918. This is his headstone, and the information here is on two. It's Private Willie Ashworth in the middle there, from West Yorkshire, uh, and at the bottom, aged 22 years, and was laid to rest at... Oh, sorry, I can't make that out. Somewhere in France as most of these people are, I believe. As you head round the graveyard, you do find other uh, memorials to victims of the war. 
Uh, for example, this one here is of Clarence Sunderland. He was from Hebden Bridge, so he's not on the War Memorial. Died June 1916, just aged 20. We do have a picture of Clarence, so I'm going to include him here. He was a rifleman, um, killed during enemy shelling on the France-Belgium border. While I'm here, I will just point out uh, this grave behind me. This is the grave of my great-great-uncle Dent Parker, who designed uh, Peckett Pike. And... What we've found out from the 1921 census that recently came out is that he owned two quarries uh, back then, one in Peckett and one in Midgley. Um, so I do wonder if the stone from those quarries went towards the building of the pike. Next to Dent, there is actually another war grave here of a Sergeant Row. Um, there's been a story recently of a, a Sharamang crash that took place in the 1920s. Uh, you'll be able to find that video on my channel, uh, which features uh, Sergeant Rowe. Now, we may not have much more success today. Uh, some of the people we're looking for are in this area here. And as you can see, it's... A, some of it is not accessible, some have stones that have fallen over. Um, let's see if we can find just a couple more before we finish today. Yeah, so I've gone all the way along. Unfortunately, I've not been able to find uh, the people on this row I'd hope to find. But I will at least show you who is buried here. So somewhere here is the grave of Ethelbert Redman. Uh, who was a private in Duke of Wellington's regiment. He died aged 37 in March 1918. And also on this row we would have found Henry Dewhurst, also part of Duke of Wellington's regiment. He died 1917 at the age of 21. There is, however, another uh, war grave just here. Um, Again, I don't know where these people would have been from originally. Um, two halfway down, Wilbert Jackson and Samuel Jackson. So just before I called off the search, I've managed to find the grave of John Crabtree, uh, who died of his wound 1942 aged 27 years, and he's interred uh, in a cemetery in Egypt. This is a photo of John. Uh, John was a member of the Royal Tank Regiment and died at the age of 27. So we didn't quite manage to find every single grave, unfortunately, that we were looking for today. Uh, but I think we found a few, and you can certainly have a snapshot um, of uh, some of the faces to the names of the people who died mostly in the First World but also the Second World War. The um, purpose of this was just to give you a little snapshot uh, to, of those names that are on the War Memorial at Peckett uh, rather than them just being a name that could be forgotten. So I'd like to thank Chris at the Waynesgate Graveyard Project uh, for giving me permission to use information uh, from their website to make the videos from here. Um, if you are uh, able to, do look on that website. You will find information about a good number of the other people who are buried here. Some famous names as well. And if you have any information, maybe, of your lost relatives in this graveyard and any interesting stories i'm sure it'd be good to hear from you to pass on that info to build their website see you next time guys take care